I'm Joel Benton, I'm County Council for the County. I've been County Council for about a year and a half now. Um, and I was asked to sort of come and have a discussion with the NRAC committee regarding what exactly is federal coordination, because I understand uh, NRAC has been asked to sort of look at federal coordination issues as it relates to uh, federal management decisions and how, how does the county sort of fit into that framework. And so I, I just want to have a brief discussion about sort of what federal coordination is um, and, and what, it, what rights it provides the county and what sort of obligations it puts onto a federal agency. Um, and then additionally sort of contrast that with cooperation, which is a different process under a different set of federal statutes. I think that there are times when uh, they both start with C, they're both federal statutes. People can sort of get them mixed and confused as to what is coordination, what is cooperation. Um, when does, when does which one apply? And so I've been asked to sort of come here and provide a, a brief uh, discussion or, or, or start a brief discussion uh, outlining what is federal coordination, where does it come from, um, and what does it do? And so uh, for the vast majority of coordination, so coordination is a specific step process under specific statutory uh, requirements. As applicable to the land, federal lands within the county's jurisdiction, there's really two um, coordinates, two statutes that require coordination that are applicable. One is FLIPMA, Federal uh, Land Federal Land Policy Management Act, which applies to and direct BLM on how it manages BLM managed properties. And then additionally, there is the National Forest Management Act, which similarly but at times differently directs the U.S. Forest Service on how the U.S. Forest Service manages those lands managed by the U.S. Forest Service. And so if there is a requirement under FLIPMA, it applies to the Department of the Interior slash uh, the Bureau of Land Management and not to the Department of Ag and the U.S. Forest Service. Um, whereas if it's the National Forest Management Act, it's going to apply to the U.S. Forest Service and the Department of Ag as opposed, and not to the Department of Interior and BLM. So we have a bunch of federal lands in the county who are managed it, to, to some extent by different federal departments, in fact, different even secretaries. We have a Secretary of Interior and a Secretary of, of Agriculture, and so they have sort of different focuses on how they do things and different statutes under which they operate. So as applied to, to, to ONC lands, which is a large chunk of the county's lands, um, they're managed by the BLM. They're, they're, they're federal lands managed by the BLM, and so they're subject to the provisions of FLIPMA, the Federal Lands Policy Management Act. Um, it's, you talk in acronyms enough, you start to forget what they actually mean. <laughs> and so under FLIPMA, there is a requirement that when federal agencies, or when the BLM in our case, are going to start making management decisions as to how they're going to adopt a management plan to manage the lands within our jurisdiction, that they coordinate with the local government. So I think we need to sort of briefly discuss about that's not everything that they could ever possibly do. So it's not how they're going to buy... Um, uh, to one extent, it's not what, are they going to buy a recycled paper which will be used in photocopiers which are going to be used to distribute that. That's not a management decision. Uh, implementing a management decision. So if they have adopted a management plan and the management plan says to close X road, the, the decision, the management plan is what there would be coordination. The decision or implementation of that road closure is not a management decision. That's an implementation of management decision. So there wouldn't likely be a coordination requirement. So it's, it's about adopting the broad management policies for the federal lands um, is where coordination would be impacted, not implementing those broad policy management plans. And so it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good idea as we go through the discussion to sort of keep a focus on that's the, the types of federal decisions we're talking about. Can we ask questions at all? Absolutely. So uh, there are no particular statutes that govern any coordination with the other agencies like National Marine Fishery Service and the Wildlife Service? Well, and, and we can get to that. So yes, there actually is. They, they, the, the BLM is actually directed to coordinate with other federal agencies, um, directed to coordinate with the state, directed to coordinate with local governments, and directed to coordinate with local, uh, tribal governments. So essentially every level of government who has a jurisdiction and who may be impacted by the federal decision on the lands within their jurisdiction has a coordination requirement. Um, for the most part though, 
Uh, and, and I think it'll, it'll, it'll help you to get some extent when you have an idea of what coordination actually means. Um, because coordination is more about a process of making sure that you understand each other's plans when you're making your plan as opposed to getting direction on what other people want to see in your plan. Um, and there's kind of a distinction there. So yes, there is a, a requirement by, uh, under FLIPMA for BLM to look at, to coordinate with, which essentially means to look at NIMS plans, to look at NOAA plans, to look at the state's plans, to look at the county's plans, uh, to look at the tribal plans. And so there, there is a broad coordination requirement. Um, for the most part, the county talks about it as applied to local government coordination because we're a local government. And so that, that's where our focus has been. But yes, it is a much broader requirement. So, so you, yeah, I was sort of, sort of answering you, but you sort of think then that, like the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, their coordination would be actually, uh, I guess, a step under the BLMs, and if the BLM has a plan that they're putting forth, and of course it affects what Fish and Wildlife would be doing, then that would allow us to find out what Well, I guess yes and no. So I would say, U.S. for U.S. Fish and Wildlife does not. Have, so if they're going to take an action, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, they have no obligation that I have seen under FLIPMA to, to coordinate with the county. So it's BLM's obligation to go. So BLM wants to, to pursue a plan or adopt a plan. It's BLM's obligations to go out and gather everybody else's plans, sort of put them into the hopper, consider them, and then decide what BLM is going to do. So it's, the coordination is not a way for, because BLM's plan is going to impact U.S. Fish and Wildlife, therefore U.S. Fish and Wildlife has to come and talk to the county. It's the BLM working with each of the individual parties, not the parties cross-working with each other. Does that answer your question? Yeah, Sorry. so there's a lot of work that the Fish and Wildlife Service does, like they designate this critical habitat, which they have no... no uh, well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have any say under it under flip -up. Yeah. So FLIPMA. Mm -hmm. there, there may be other avenues which I can go into where there, that would be a federal action where we would not coordinate, but we may have an opportunity to use the other C word, which is cooperate. And so I, I guess that's where it, it kind of gets all muddled together. But so yes, if U.S. Fish and Wildlife was going to designate critical habitat for a, a, a species or an endangered species, they wouldn't have to come to the county to look at our plan and see what we want to do because they're not subject to the coordination requirement. But BLM, if it's looking for how are we going to manage the ONC lands, they're required to go look at U.S. Fish and Wildlife's plans for how they're doing handling critical habitat when it comes for BLM adopting its management plan. So it, it's kind of a one-way street. It's not everybody has to look at everybody else's plans. It's a one-way street for when BLM is taking action to look at everybody else's plans. So, because the way I'm trying, I'm trying to wrap my head around this because I'm dealing with it in another sure. avenue too. But so the way I'm kind of understanding it is that when you're cooperating, you're really just providing your plan. You're not, you're not able to really make comment on how they devise their plan, their that, management plan. Is that correct? That's coordination. That's the coordination. The coordination it's is giving them your stuff, it, and they. It, it may help. I, let me cut. If, if it may help if I read you what basically it says, coordination is supposed. Well, coordination is supposed to integrate the two plans the best as possible. Right. Right. So, basically, uh, I'm going to try to look. So BLM is required to coordinate the land use inventory, planning, and management activities. So it's limited to, to inventory and planning and management activities with the land use planning and management programs of local governments. So it's not about everything that the county does, it's about looking at and in, in coordinating their inventory planning and management with our land use planning and, and land use management plan programs. Um, they're basically, the, the Secretary of the Interior is directed, and this is where we get squishy words, uh, to the extent he finds practical, so it's not an, an absolute obligation, it's to the extent the Secretary of the Interior finds practical, to keep apprised of our local land use plans, assure that consideration is given to our land to our local land use plans that are that are relevant to the plan that the BLM is adopting, assist in resolving, again to the matter to the extent practical, the inconsistencies between what the federal agency wants to do and what our plan is, and then provide for meaningful public involvement of local government officials in the development of the land use plans. And this includes, so that's what is meaningful 
public involvement mean? Um, what they have said further in the statute, that would include early public notice of proposed decisions. So um, generally, if federal agencies are going to take an action, they have to provide public notice of that action. They have to uh, publish it in the Federal Registrar. There's a comment period, et cetera, et cetera. Under FLIPMA, we're supposed to get early public notice. Now, what does early public notice mean? I, I wish I could tell you. We've interpreted, and there are other agencies, local government agencies, and sort of local government advocacy groups who argue that that means that we we're supposed to get early. It's early public notice, so we're supposed to get it earlier than the public. If it's just, if it was public notice, we would get it at the same time everyone else got it. But they use the special word early, so we've interpreted to mean that that's different than before general public. Uh, unfortunately, there is not a case law or agency interpretation that would that says it either way. I haven't seen it happen. Uh, again, that I, I can't disagree with you on that, but that, that is what the statute says. Um, and BLM, if you ask them, will tell you they're doing what they're supposed to do. I mean, that, that, that's the conversation side. And they use the word cooperation. They, they do use the word cooperation, which is a different process. And I think that it might be good at this point to sort of talk about where cooperation comes from. So there's another federal statute, the National Environmental Protection Act, which establishes and authorizes federal agencies to cooperate with other agencies who have knowledge relevant to the decisions they're going to make. So that is where we get into cooperation. And cooperation is, is, is a process where the, uh, a federal agency, including BLM, can enter into an agreement with a local government, a tribe, a state, uh, other entities who have knowledge that they feel are relevant to the decision they're going to make. And this is more of the process where you sit down at a table and you provide information and I won't say negotiate because under all federal statutes, it's very clear that the federal agencies and the federal government are not waiving federal sovereignty. So uh, these are processes about keeping local governments, tribes, and states involved in the decision, but not ceding any of the decision-making authority that the federal government so it's not, there, there's not a process under either coordination or cooperation to force a federal agency to follow what our plan says. It is a process by which we're allowed to provide input into the process. And so cooperation is, is under the National Environmental Protection Act. So the National Environmental Protection Act requires federal agencies to basically look at the impacts that, and, and it's very broad, really any decision they make, they're supposed to look at those decisions and see what impacts it's going to have on the environment prior to implementing that decision or making a final decision. Now, there, there's actually guidance from the Council on Economic Quality, CEQ, I think I have that one right, who is the federal agency charged with sort of adopting regulations for how NEPA is supposed to work. And they said, look, read broadly enough, that really would imply that what brand of paper or how what's the percentage of recycling in theory could impact the environment such that you would need to go through this sort of environmental analysis to determine is the, it, what impact. Now, they've said that that doesn't apply. It's that we're not looking at levels of paper, but we're looking at sort of decisions on the ground that are going to impact the environment, and depending on what level of impact that they may have versus what level of knowledge that the federal agency has about that particular project determines what, how, how much in analysis they need to do. So the first step could be what the, the, the least analysis possible is what's called a categorical exclusion. A categorical exclusion basically says the project I want to do is such that I, I've done a million, I've done them before, it's, this one isn't really any different than the other ones, or it's small enough that there is no real impact to the environment based on my project. And so under NEPA, if, they, if the federal agency, and this is a federal agency decision, makes that determination, they don't really have to do any analysis. The, the assumption is done, the analysis is already done. They've done their analysis, they've determined that there is no impact because they know what the project is well enough to do. So that's essentially the first level of compliance with NEPA is really no analysis or, or reliance on previous analysis. The next level is what's called an environmental assessment. That is where you sort of do a cursory look, a, a, a less detailed look, cursory is not the word, but a less detailed look into what are they going to be the impacts and you can produce a report. This is where local governments, is, is where cooperation would come in. They could enter into what's called a cooperating agency agreement with us, and it's, it's, it, it is an agreement. There is an agreement between the county, in this case, and the federal agency for how cooperation will work, what the county is agreeing to do, what the federal agency is agreeing to do. Um, in this particular, the county has been offered cooperating agency agreements before, and we've 
declined to enter into them because we weren't interested in the terms. So it, it's again, it's not a mandatory, they have to enter into an agreement under whatever terms we want, but it's, a, it's an agreement by which two parties decide how they want to follow the process. And because and under NEPA, the federal agency is the, what's called the lead agency. And so ultimately the decision is theirs, but they're the ones who are gathering everyone at the table to get everyone's input into the project prior to them making their decision. So that's cooperation. That is the traditional, let's all sit around at a table and read pre-drafts and all the other stuff and gather information and talk about it. That's, that's cooperation. And then that can then go up to finally the, the I guess the full blown EIS, the environmental impact statement, which is a full blown analysis of, of hundreds of factors that people identify for um, to identify and, and sort of the, what the environmental impacts of the federal decision will be. And that's another opportunity for the, the county or other local governments to enter into a cooperating agency agreement. And so depending on the level analysis, the EA versus the EIS. That may detail the level of involvement by the, the local government or other cooperating agency. If they're doing sort of a, a less strict EA analysis, they may decide they don't need as much information or as much input from the county. If they decide they need to do a full-blown EIS, there may be more of an opportunity for the county as a cooperating agency to provide information. Good question. Bill. Sure. Um, I guess I got a light bulb came on a little bit. Beyond going through the planning process now for their whatever it is, 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. are, are you saying it's possible for this county to enter into a cooperating agreement with them for that plan? Well, that, there was a specific plan? There, there, there was, and, and, and in fact, uh, the county, uh, the, if, if you look at the action, uh, BLM put forward what's called a draft. RMP, so it's the draft Western Oregon RMP resource management plan slash environmental impact statement. So it's actually one document complying with two separate federal statutes. The RMP, the resource management plan, is how they're planning to manage the federal lands in Jackson County and in, in Western Oregon, and that comes under FLIPMA. The EIS half of that is the environmental impact analysis of what their draft plan is, and that comes under NEPA. And so there was, there, there is or could have been an opportunity for the county to enter into cooperating agency agreement to participate in the development of the EIS into that. Um, so if you did that, I guess we didn't do that. The but county did not enter into But if you did that, you could actually put down some things on paper saying this is what we'd like to do, this is what you, we'd like to see at particular times part of that process, which would be pretty in a different way than with the public. Seems like it might be an opportunity to get uh, coordination out of the general category and into a specific plan category. Well, and, and I guess it, it kind of depends, and, and this is a decision. So cooperation does not, it, it, it Cooperation is essentially whatever the two the, the two entities agree to. So it's whatever the local government, in our case Jackson County, and BLM would enter into an agreement specifying what BLM is going to consider, what they're going to hear from us. That's different than coordination, which says you're supposed to look at our plans, the extent, extent practical, resolve inconsistencies, provide early public notice, and all the rest of that. Um, for a myriad of reasons, likely that we can't discuss in public a public meeting, the county did not enter into an agreement with BLM to, to act as a cooperating agency. I don't think we ever had. Uh, we have, there's some cooperating agency agreements I'm aware of. There's a very old one. No, I mean a coordination agreement. Well, okay, that's different. That's a coordination agreement as well. So if you look at the federal statute, there's no requirement for an agreement between the county and BLM to, to, to implement coordination through an agreement. Coordination is a statutory requirement for BLM to do specific things. If, if the county never enters into an agreement, there's not really a, a, an out for, the, for BLM to say, well, we, we weren't able to negotiate an agreement with the county. It is specific statutory requirements for BLM to engage in prior to or as part of adopting their RMP. Is so, that's only when the county requests of the BLM coordination and, and so that is, that is an interesting point. So essentially, there, that's not specifically in the statute, but some of the, the courts that have looked at this issue have found that if counties don't assert their rights, you've waived your rights. 
So it, the, the statute doesn't say local government must assert its coordination rights, but courts have sort of looked at it and said, well, if you don't tell BLM you don't, you, you, if you don't tell BLM that you want these rights, then BLM didn't know and should, didn't know they were supposed to include, include them in the process. So you sort of waived those arguments. You uh, try and think of the right legal term. You're stopped essentially. You're prevented from making those arguments because you should have. You should have told them before that you wanted them. You can't come in after the process is all done when you would have had an opportunity to tell them before and attempt to then assert it into, into it. So that's where the you need to assert your rights. And Jackson County, we have adopted a, a federal federal coordination policy is, is an ordinance within the county. I've, I've used it. So we, the county has adopted a coordination policy. As part of adopting that policy, we, the county sent out letters to basically every federal agency from the, the local managers all the way up to the, the secretaries of the interior and agriculture saying we are asserting our coordination rights. So that, not required under statute, but gets us around the courts who have decided that if you don't do that, then you're sort of, a, you're prevented from asserting your rights. So we have asserted our rights. And what that's in the general theme. Yes. Yeah. So a request for all sub material that could be affecting the county at the federal level? That, that, that's what Beyond. we have done. We have, we have told, we told the locals, so, so the federal agencies work that sometimes the local, the locals have certain autonomy to do things that don't go up to regional. The regional has certain autonomy to do things that don't go up to state, or I think it's state and then regional. I'm trying to remember structure. Regional has certain autonomy, and then finally the nat there's national things that require national BLM buy-in. And so we've asserted all the different levels of the federal agency that whenever you're doing something that substantially impacts Jackson County, we want to have coordination rights if they're applicable. And what happens if they do not coordinate with the county after having received such a request or demand? Well, there, that, that, so within the statute, there is no specific remedy if they refuse to do this. Um, there, there's been a few court cases, uh, one court case, so as part of the county telling BLM and the Department of the Interior and everyone else that we want our coordination rights, we sent out proposed coordination agreements, so not cooperation agreements, which is under NEPA, but we sent out proposed coordination agreements. Um, unfortunately, none of the federal agencies, and, and all of our agreement basically said is here's the nine things you're supposed to do under coordination, this is how the county would like to see us interact with you as an agency to achieve these nine things. Um, as far as I am aware, not a single federal agency at any level agreed to enter into a coordination agreement with us. Um, I can't tell you why. They, they, I'm not privy to their decision-making process. I can tell you that there was, there's been a couple of lawsuits by local governments on federal agencies violating or failing to meet their coordination responsibilities. Most of those are, are end up with the federal court saying, yeah, they didn't meet coordination, but in the end, the decision was the federal agencies alone anyway, so there's not really any harm. Um, do better. It was the, what's the sense of having coordination? The, well, they just so didn't they, but, but under it, Flint, it's required. It, it is required. However, there is, there is one case that basically where a local vision of a, of a federal agency did enter into an agreement with a local government to coordinate. This is how coordination was going to be. And in that case, the court actually unrolled the federal decision um, because it wasn't, it was both a coordination violation, but also a contract violation. They had a contract. And so I don't know if that impacts whether or not our federal agencies are, are inclined to enter into contracts with us or not. But so far, none of them have entered into contracts. I think we can make arguments, and, and I, I do believe that if, if, so I guess the question is, when can the county sue? I think that was part of your, your question. So the county can't sue until there's actually been a violation. There's not an actual violation until the federal agency makes a final decision. So right now, they're working on the Western Oregon Resource Management Plan. They should have been coordinating with us this entire time. However, until they actually make a decision, As they have asserted those and we've asserted those rights, but until they make a decision, there's been no quote unquote violation because they could end up not making any decision and starting the process all over. 
So until there's actually a final decision out of a federal agency, that is at the point in which we could say, hold on, you made a decision and we have rights under FLIPMA for coordination, you didn't follow those rights, um, in, in attempt to, to assert our rights through, through litigation. And that would ultimately be a decision for the Board of Commissioners to make it, it, whether or not we're going to institute litigation um, related to coordination. And that would go down to the ninth. It would start here and then end up at the ninth, and then work its way to. So, so we asked the agencies to sign an agreement saying they would coordinate. It, it wasn't necessarily a sign agreement that, that they that they agreed to coordinate. It was to sign an agreement on this is the process by which we're going to achieve coordination. I, I, and I don't know if, if that normally makes a distinction. So they have an obligation to coordinate regardless of whether or not they sign any agreements with us. We wanted to put on paper, like, so what does, to the extent practical, keep apprised of local government plans make? Um, we wanted, we had a, a proposed agreement where we were going to say, well, this is what you're going to do, and this is what we're going to do to ensure that you meet your obligation to keep apprised of our local government plans. So, and that was sent to them, do you know what level of government it went to? Every level that we sent the letter to asserting our coordination rights. So th there was never a written response to that. They just ignored it. Probably. It's been a while. Uh, no one signed it. I know that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Can you go? In, I think you could go into the letter that they wanted us to sign. Oh, yeah, so I guess that, that was a discussion we had. So, so that I guess that's so. So back to the Western Oregon RMP EIS. So as, if we've been talking about coordination, is dealing with the RMP half of the RMP EIS. EIS is the Environmental Impact Statement, which is under NEPA, which is about cooperation. So the county was approached with an with an opportunity to to sign the environment to sign a cooperating agency agreement in the development of the EIS the environmental impact statement of the RMP. One of the, the, the county was not willing to agree to the terms that BLM proposed. One of the things that the county wanted in the agreement was a specific language that basically said, cooperation is not coordination. This agreement will not be taken as a satisfaction of the county's coordination rights. So we wanted to expressly provide in the agreement where we're doing this as cooperation under NEPA. This has no impact on any coordination obligations under FLIP. Uh, and that, that's, that's language that the county wanted to put into this agreement. That was not language that BLM was willing to put into the agreement. And that, that's sort of where we ended up with Despite some of the local uh, BLM saying that that would be effective, that's the appropriate Again, that, 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 that I don't know at what, what level that decision was made, but BLM was not willing to express the county to put in in our cooperating agency agreement, that cooperation is not going to satisfy coordination. Why had they never identified for us? That sounds like it was the uh, yeah, council, government council, that suggested that. I, think. I, I can't begin to speculate. But it did raise a big red flag. Why would they not want us to? Why would they want to do it this way? Why would they not recognize the current law? So I think it's coming back to sort of what NRAC is, is, is doing is I understand NRAC has sort of been asked to look at coordination in the sense of county plans. So coordination is about county plans and, and applicable county land use and management plans applicable to federal lands. And so it, it, as I understand NRAC, you guys have some questions about, well, what is coordination? What are we supposed to be looking at? So really, in, 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 in the concept, or as I understood the direction, was we should be looking, or NRAC should be looking at sort of what local plans we have that are applicable to federal management actions. In this case, uh, management actions under BLM, under uh, FLIPMA, but also potentially U.S. Forest Service actions under the uh, Forest Service land under the National Forest Management Act. Coordination is a little different from under the National Forest Management Act, uh, FLIPMA, while it doesn't give us a whole lot of details as to what coordination does, it gives us some. Um, National Forest Management Act basically has one sentence that says you should coordinate with local governments. So it doesn't give us guidelines about to the extent practical of keeping apprised of local plans, 
resolving inconsistencies or like helping us or any of that. But there still is a, a, a one sentence, it might even be two sentence, coordination requirement under National Forest Management Act. So I think that the, the concept of being dug is, is probably is the least I'm better to describe this, is to get an understanding of what coordination is. So coordination is about the federal government agencies looking at our plans and attempting to integrate them into their plans. Or if they can't integrate them, resolving, to the extent practical, inconsistencies between their plans and our plans. So the county's refusal to accept that in terms of what the BLM is asking to come in as coordination then allows the county to sometimes refuse to take the government to court. That's I, it. I don't know. I don't speculate on what the county. Uh, the, the county, we sent a letter, a three page letter, to the BLM on July 15th. It's on the front page of the county website if you're interested in reading it. Um, the county reviewed the draft. RMP EIS, and in our letter we identified where we felt that the BLM failed to meet coordination under FLIPMA and cooperation under NEPA. This was last July. This July, like a yeah, month ago. Month ago. Oh. So if you're interested in reading the letter, it, it is on the the front page of the county website. The county website recently, I was trying to find the letter. The county website recently got redesigned. It's sort of in the in the middle column on the bottom. And so it's a three-page letter, uh, not looking at the substance of the RMP, but looking at the process of the RMP. And the letter identifies, um, signed by Doug, um, of where the, the county believes that our coordination rights and then also our cooperation rights were not satisfied through the process BLM used to draft its RMP EIS. So does this then set us up or put us in a position to where if they end up putting out a plan that we just completely disagree with, it gives us the opportunity to? Uh, ultimately, if, if they fail to meet their obligations and, and we have a, we would have a right under it, we could pursue right. litigation right. if the county wanted to. Um, I guess, to, I don't know how deep you want to go, so statutes are adopted by the, the, the Congress and signed by the, the President. Sorry, my brain just uh, but then statutes mostly for the mostly provide broad policy ideas, and so it's up to the federal agencies through what's called federal regulations to adopt on how they're going to implement the statutes. And so BLM has adopted a whole bunch of regulations on how they're going to implement FLIPMA, including coordination. And so one of the requirements, um, and, and to some extent, I think that the the the, the regulations may conflict with or be different than the statutory obligations and that hasn't been resolved by the court, so we, that, that's a potential issue of litigation. Uh, but one of the requirements is, is if we believe that our coordination rights haven't been met, we need to identify for them where we haven't been met. And so I think that would, this letter helps satisfy that regulatory requirement. Okay. Would it be safe to say that Yeah, I mean that. That's yeah. I would say that the county is keeping as many options available, but, but ultimately no decision has been made. Um, the letter went out. We're in interested in reading it, and uh, it, it identifies almost point by point where the county has felt that the process required under either statute or regulation has not been satisfied. So, do you expect to get a response to that? You think you would. Well the, com well, the comment period is still open. So we submitted our letter during the comment period that BLM had opened EIS. So it's part of an environmental impact statement. You put out your environmental impact statement. You as the federal agency, you put out an environmental impact statement. You then provide a period of 90, 120, whatever, whatever you want of days for people to make comments on it. And then you're supposed to take those comments, read them through, and then address them within the final document. So. We don't know, we won't, likely won't get any response until the comment period is ended because generally, and, and this is my experience with federal agents, they don't even read the comments until the comment period is over. Um, and then they stack them all up and they burn through them at the end. It, it's not, a, so I don't know how BLM, and, and that's just been my experience in working with federal agencies, is they're going to read the comments when the comment period is over. How they, it, it's ultimately up to them how they respond if they address it um, along with the rest of it. So it really doesn't apply to the response either. 
I, I, uh, what is an early public notice of a proposed decision? Um, I, I, no, no, the early response, we wouldn't get an early response to our comments. Did any other counties do that? To my knowledge, we're the only county that took this particular path. Uh, the comment period is still open. I think it closes the 23rd, 24th. It's so, the only county that sent a letter objecting to the process. As far as I'm aware, I'm not aware of any, but I, I have been tracking. Uh, and things are very, uh, I mean, can be volatile at times. The original comment period was going to close, I, I want to say, like July 15, 16, 17. Um, they put out a notice like two, two days before they were adding 30 days. So it, 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 things are constantly changing. If you're not constantly sort of updating, you're not aware. Um, so I, I don't know. I haven't been tracking to see if other counties, what they've done, or, or other local governments, because this isn't just counties per se. Or the state could have put in comments, trial governments could have put in comments on the list. To my knowledge, on this IMD issue, uh, all the two counties signed the cooperative agreement and allowed OEC counties to be represented at the table under the cooperative uh, conversation. The only two counties that didn't sign was Jackson and Grossman counties. Uh, there's a discussion tomorrow the subsidy of argument coming out of the DLC counties on what the letter of campaign is going to see counties will be providing for a comment period. But to my understanding, to what was the only one that was provided in the subsidy of any letter on the technical issues. I think that is what I'm saying. That's I I don't know what ONC yeah, is doing. Yeah, so that's why I was just saying. That's, I said on the board of the DLC, that's why I don't know that's going to happen. We're trying to move, I guess, the next subject I need on the agenda. The plan. The old business or something. Talk about the yellow plan. No more questions? Sorry, I'm late. You're excused. I thought I could excuse you, but. <laughs> I give you the power. It's like. Any other questions? Right. It, it, it's kind of confusing coordination, cooperation, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, 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 is there any, there's three distinct different acts that the, 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 the allowance of violence acts are three distinct different acts? Is there a written document that would assist this committee on, I mean, you know, there's going to be other turnover for committee members and every, I mean, they say, what's the difference? And um, <laughs> you don't have to have sure. council I, I come mean, in every time. I think a good place to start is, is if you haven't read it, the, 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 the kind of ordinance on coordination. Um, I don't know the chapter title off the top of my head. That's a really good sort of primer on coordination. Um, I think it's important to sort of remember that, uh, and I don't know if there's a written document, uh, but I, I will have to look on sort of detailing the distinctions between the two. There was one, uh, we, we just create that memo that in July, there was a, a, a brief presentation to the board. I can look to see if there was a memo that went in. And, and it's a very similar discussion with this that we, that we had on a Wednesday meeting. Yeah, I think we did. I think we did. When we adopted the letter, the sort of discussing what coordination was versus cooperation, um, I think that there are times, it, it, and I have to admit it is a, a highly technical and nuanced area, and they, they frequently get intermingled, um, especially since, for example, the BLM is doing both at the same time, just because they're having to comply with multiple statutes through one action. And so um, I can see if there's something that I can get to the committee or, or have available. A couple of us were on the committee that developed the uh, coordination okay. with the consultant that we hired. Uh, Cable Houston or CSA? Uh, CAS. Yeah, I think Dave and I were on a particular, I don't know if it's all of this. And the ordinance is what we sent out a little bit ago, right? There's copies of it right there? Yeah. Thank you. We had it in the top. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job, Bill. Thank you. Yeah, all it's right. It's kind of interesting that if it's possible to have a coordination agreement for a big plan. 
that are just specifically for the planet, rather than just a general comment about coordination for all of their plans. And so you can negotiate things as they come up on that particular point. That probably won't happen. And I think the feds are a little skeptical of doing that. Yeah, I think they are. Because the last time they had that document in the jewelry uh, uh, talked about a moment ago, they were overturned in a court case and they actually lost. So they're, they're probably not going to want to enter into something like that. Yeah. yeah. So we would rather stand on the uh, as uh, soon as possible and as close as and we would rather the mission while she turns her in in that in that last statute. The loose of the language, yeah. Yeah, to read back to it. Yeah. The loose of the community language the best thing. Yeah. But I, I think I can talk to the fact that we had discussions in the previous board and how we don't work here. We uh, we specifically didn't want to sign that uh, coordination doc or cooperative document on this R and D because we felt that it would uh, they were gonna feel they were gonna need to satisfy the coordination requirements and they wouldn't be as clarified in uh, that documentation that it didn't be and agree with us. So we sort of stayed of shied away from that and left some avenues here that we have that really other county has because they signed the document. So it's we've, we've tried to leave many options available. Uh, we don't know what we're gonna do going forward, but until they make a decision on something we really don't have Joe pointed out, until a decision's been made, you don't have someone to go. Because you can't do something and something like that. You couldn't get in pre preliminarily, and they came up, come up with the various alternatives to uh, request other alternatives that would be more in favor or more favorable to the county. Because their alternatives, none of them are going to help this county. I mean, I, I think the county's going to get nailed. From this commissioner's perspective, if I read all of the alternatives, I don't think any one of them are going to be very, very good. I made that record, I made that statement in the public, the elected official public comment. They're going to be horrible for this county. And, and Joe um, I don't see any one of those proposals that they have drafted representing the uh, Jackson, Josephine, Douglas, any other region at all. Uh, however, with that being said, <coughs> I do believe that uh, diplomacy in this particular case might be the way to get some things done. And asserting those coordination rights might give us an ability, this is my personal belief, give us an ability to maybe restart something if necessary using our existing plans to be able to coordinate because as we use that technical piece that we're putting in there, when you fail to follow this step of the law, let's go back to the beginning of the clock, let's bring our plans back in, have the conversation, and then from there, integrate them to the best extent possible, and then go back to the public comment area. Now, with that being said, uh, I've had conversations with uh, Robert Bonney, Under Secretary for the Department of the Interior, on this particular subject, and he's in the room with on that particular piece. So, um, I gotta be careful here. I don't want to cross any executive session boundaries. Sometimes they what's been said publicly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the my intent here is to find a diplomatic avenue, so to avoid litigation, but to be able to go back and do exactly what Flip was asking of us and asking the federal government is to coordinate our local plans to the best as possible and to meet that check mark. And then we go back to the public. Because I don't believe that uh, there should be multiple bites of the apple on this one. And we're not being represented, in my opinion, from our local. The way our plans are written and the way that I see the, uh, these R&D developing, but it's not done yet. I don't see anywhere close to where our local plans and what this R&D, where they even come close to looking at something. Where local plans are they tight enough and specific enough so that we can do that? Well, that's the whole thing why I asked this community to start looking at those things. Mm -hmm. And that's what brought on the conversation. Yeah. Because if as we go down this path, and then I guarantee you we have the ear and the undersecretary on this subject. And I see the National Wildfire Coordinating Council moving down this direction also. So I have a federal uh, 
Chief of the Forest Service, the Under Secretary of BLM, everybody looking at this process. I mean, this is the way we start bringing in local, uh, local, having a strong local plan. Having a strong local, having a strong local influence into the development of these plans because local governments are being cut out of the process as the NGOs are having a stronger voice than local government. So everybody's kind of in agreement and they're starting to move that direction and get us there. But before we get to that point, standing around the cliff and jump into this new abyss, we better darn well, well be prepared and have all the knots in our parachute tied correctly. And that's what I'm referring to in those plans, make sure they're written well and everything's up to date so that when we move forward, we're representing what we need to do. Because coordination is not uh, people sitting down and working it out. It is this plan and it is this plan coming together and doing the best they can to integrate the two. What's being said is the interpretation of those plans and plans. But without having a plan in place that's comprehensive enough, it won't be uh, brought into the consideration. Now, if it is too, extra, uh, too outlandish on one side, you know, everybody will look at that and say, that's crazy, and then we look at and that's the best extent possible piece that the secretary can say, I, you know, I looked at it, there's no way, it's too crazy to plan. So there has to be some balance in there 